Calling stealth games a genre can at times feel like an exaggeration. As the years have dragged on, stealth has more and more begun to feel like a formula, especially as fewer and fewer games are made in the stealth vein. Whether it's third person or first person, every single stealth game follows either in the mold of Metal Gear Solid or Thief. Obviously, every game introduces their own flavor, adding or subtracting from the base formula as they see fit, but every once in a while, a game comes along that does more than make minor modifications. Mark of the Ninja is one of those games, and not only did it really reinvigorate the stealth genre at the time, but its influence continues to be felt to this day, especially in the indie game space. And that's despite the fact that it seems like a lot of people have more or less forgotten about it. Now, probably the first and most obvious difference between this game and the vast majority of stealth games is that Mark of the Ninja is in 2D. And you don't see that a lot, usually for good reason. Moving to 2D limits what you can do in terms of game mechanics, but limitations can also be beneficial. They can force developers to find new and inventive ways to approach problems, and can often end up helping create a tighter experience overall. And Mark of the Ninja is one of the tightest stealth experiences I've ever had. Everything feels like it's there for a reason, purposefully placed within the small environments. AI pathing is perfectly designed to be tough while still giving you ample opportunity to eliminate or avoid targets. Object placement is done in such a way that makes it simple, though not easy, to distract guards. And security measures are scattered throughout the building in a manner that makes it much more challenging to just bypass every single guard. Put in very simple terms, Everything in Mark of the Ninja has been designed to a T. Everything feels like it has a purpose. Everything has been precisely honed to try and provide the player with the perfect experience, whether they choose to take the stealthy, non-lethal approach, the violent, head-on approach, or anything in between. Some are going to be harder to pull off than others, but every single one of them feels like they have just the right amount of challenge for what you're trying to do. Of course, having everything so precision engineered also means that the game isn't as freeform as a lot of other stealth games. The stealth genre has become almost inextricably connected to immersive gameplay design thanks to games like Hitman, Thief, and Dishonored, but Mark of the Ninja represents a much more streamlined, linear experience. There's still definitely a lot of choice in how you approach each scenario, but there isn't necessarily the nearly endless list of possibilities you might have come to expect. But that's okay. Mark of the Ninja represents something completely different from the status quo and stealth in a lot of ways, while still conforming to the most important elements of what people want from the genre. You still sneak around, completing objectives as silently as possible, and are given plenty of choice in how to approach those objectives. The fact that the amount of choice doesn't quite reach the levels of other games in the genre may not appeal to everyone, but for me, it makes it a much tighter, more unique experience. Every Friday, I look at a game that was either ignored when it came out or has been forgotten since. Games that people have missed. If you like that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can see the latest videos. If you like this video in particular, be sure to hit that like button and thanks for watching.